right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation starts right now with the Gen Zs, a mix of Gen Zs and Millennials here to speak about what do the Gen Zs want. That is the conversation we're having right now. We'd like to hear from you at Trevor Mbidja at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Citizen Daybreak. Let me introduce my guest starting from the upper deck there. On my father's right is Steve Ogutu, Governor's Commentator. Thank you very much for making time, Steve. Followed by Hassan Mahmoud Ibrahim, who's a lawyer. Sante Sana for making time. Philip Mwangale, Governance Commentator, is with us. Thank you very much for making time. On the lower deck, we have Wendy Lois, Policy Commentator. Thank you very much for making time. Alvans Odiambo, a trade unionist. Sante Sana for making time. And Wanja Maina, Communication Manager at the Hummingbird Grassroots Centre. Thank you very much for making time. Alvans, I'll start with you. You're the first one here earlier on. What really do the Gen Zs want? Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Trevor, for having us here. Uh, before I talk about what comrades want and the JNCs, may I take this opportunity to send my sincere condolences to the family who are grieving at the moment, having lost their loved ones, and all the comrades I saw by my own eyes falling during the struggle. I was personally uh, in uh, uh, Kenyatta Muchari, and uh, I'm traumatized because I witnessed the post-mortem for Evans. Evans was the first, uh, the second one to fall after Rex. And yesterday, I could not manage to stand what I saw at the city Muchari. So for those family and the f comrades who went down during the struggle, it's all our prayers. And your blood and sweat has not gone in vain. The struggle continues. Other than that one, I, I can say that uh, what the JNCs and the youth in general wants is so much broad. We could just narrow it to finance, uh, the finance bill, but it's so much broad. We are talking about the tax, but the baseline of this thing is just corruption, if you're so deep. Because uh, uh, the inequality in this country uh, has resulted from what we are seeing as uh, the capture. But the, the black guptas, you can call them the oligarchs, the few, the blandant opulence that you can see, that we are being told that uh, President Uhuru left no money in the state house, but you get the MPs dropping in choppers in Kericho carrying money in bags. You can see MPs over the weekends giving one million, two million in Arambe, in things which are not dire to everyone else. You can see every Sunday, uh, the president is going around and we are wondering, uh, the president is from which denomination? Is the president a Catholic, SK, or he has no church? Because every gathering of these churches is all about contribution money being given out to mobilize the faithful to attend to, this, to these churches. So the, the basic thing here is actually the corruption. And this corruption is what has resulted to hopelessness. It's lack of hope. And I want to assure you, Trevor, that even if yesterday many didn't turn out on the street, for me, I never betrayed the struggle. I was outside yesterday. This problem is not over. It is a postponed problem. So I, on my personal view, I can say, and I observed, having been in the struggle as a person, having seen the struggle myself, I can tell you the baseline is basically corruption. Okay. After corruption, the war on corruption will stop every other thing and will streamline everything. Okay. Yeah. Mahmoud? Thank you so much, Trevor, for the opportunity. And um, I first uh, wish to tender my condolence to the family and friends who lost their, their loved ones. Hold your thoughts for a bit, Mahmoud. We'll fix your mic in just a bit. Let me bring in Steve. Steve, what do the, what do the Gen Zs really want? Real, great, Trevor, and thanks for having me this morning. But let me start by really relaying my very sincere condolences to the families of those who lost uh, their loved ones. I mean, it's really unfortunate what happened. Um, but also to say that <coughs> You know, I think for a very long time, 
the political class have been really asking young people, you know, blaming young people for not being involved in matters governance in this country. And I think for the first time we saw young people, you know, the Gen Zs and the millennial stepping up and saying, you know, uh, this is what, this is how we want our country to be governed. You know, they're saying that we don't want to see the kind of corruption that, that we see happening. Uh, we don't want to see, you know, the kind of inept leadership uh, that is undemocratic that we see happening. And they're saying they don't want, they, they want a tribeless nation, you know, not politics that is based on ethnicity. And we, we saw that from how they mobilized um, and how they coordinated um, <clears throat> all these activities to ensure that the finance bill was finally, you know, rejected by the president. But also to add that um, I think the Gen Z is, when, when you look at the statistics of the Kenya's population, uh, about 75% there about of uh, the Kenyan population are the youth. And that is a very serious uh, youth belt, you know, in terms of population. Uh, but also when you look at um, the, 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 the un unemployment rate, you know, within that age category uh, is still very high, like 35% in the region. Um, that, that, that is very high. And so uh, young people really want jobs. Remember when this government was, co was uh, campaigning, we had a lot of promises about jobs that were going to be created, um, you know, close to 500 jobs uh, every, every year. But, but we haven't seen that coming. The president said that he was going to tap into the digital space to ensure that young people really get, get to benefit from, from the digital economy. But we, we've been seeing him in the recent tax proposal. He's really moving in very aggressively uh, to tax that sector that is really providing hope for majority of, of the youth. And so I think for me, uh, this crisis has revealed that uh, the government has to deal with youth and employment as a matter of uh, 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 priority. Because if that is not tackled, uh, then what we saw is just a symptom. Um, and we better just learn from it and see what we can do as a country. Okay. Mwangali? Um, well, to answer that question in short, uh, I don't know what Gen Z's want. But I know what uh, Kenyans want for this country. I know what uh, the citizens of this country desire from their government. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because uh, while this uh, was sparked uh, by what we are calling the Gen Z, a term that uh, I don't like using because it's, it's dismissive uh, in the first place, um, it became a nation, national affair. It became a citizen's affair. And what Kenyans want is good governance. What Kenyans want is uh, their taxes to work for them. What Kenyans want, as uh, one of my brothers has mentioned, is an end to corruption. What Kenyans want is a government that listens. Uh, Kenyans want uh, services at their doorstep, services that work for them. We have seen over the last couple of years, and not just with William Ruto's government, um, unfortunately, um, President William Ruto has succeeded in making uh, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, look like a saint. Uh, but what Kenyans have wanted for a long time is for um, people to take responsibility um, for their actions. We saw a lot of looting in Uhuru Kenyatta's government. Um, that has not been accounted for. We have seen a lot of looting with this government. That has not been accounted for. So number one, corruption uh, has to be fought at all levels of government. We have been concentrating on the national government, but there's a lot of looting uh, that is going on in the county governments. Uh, Kenyans want um, that corruption to be stemmed, to be stopped. Uh, number two, Kenyans want um, a government that listens. And what, what, what has come out from um, this protest uh, against the finance bill, um, uh, which really should have been protests against uh, an extravagant budget, is the fact that um, elected representatives um, can go against the voices of their employers uh, who are Kenyans. So Kenyans want um, the elected representatives uh, to listen to them. Number three, Kenyans want a leaner government. 
uh, because we have a bloated government. Um, we have positions in government that have been created for political expediency. Uh, Kenyans want those positions to be done away with because they have contributed to the uh, extravagance uh, in budget. Kenyans also want a transparent government. We have seen so many things happen, uh, you know, under the, um, uh, the carpet um, in this government. We have seen um, uh, you know, deals and um, a multilateral um, uh, cooperation agreement signed by the government of Kenya on behalf of the people, yet the people have no idea what they have signed up for. So um, those are basically, um, you know, um, it's, it's basically a summary of what the Kenyan people want. Uh, if we had the time, we could itemize, uh, you know, one by one uh, under those things I've mentioned, uh, what would, um, you know, be beneficial to Kenya. But uh, the last thing that has also come out uh, pronouncedly um, in this protest is uh, Kenyans want an end to police brutality and excessive use of force. That has been happening over the years, uh, not with William Ruto, not with Uhuru Kenyatta, Mwai Kibaki, uh, Daniel Arap Moy. These things have been happening continually. And even if we were to uh, have a change in government today, uh, all the police officers will not resign. Uh, the culture that has been imprinted uh, in our national police service uh, cannot go away today. So Kenyans want an end to police brutality. They want an end to excessive use of force, uh, both by state and non-state actors. That is a summary of what Kenyans want. Um, the Gen Zs are part of uh, the citizens of Kenya. So that is what the citizens of Kenya want. Okay. Mahmoud, let me bring you back in this. What do the Gen Zs want? Thank you so much, Trevor. Um, once again, I wish to pass my condolence to the family and friends who have lost their, their loved ones. It's quite unfortunate that we have to go at such level where we lose so many lives of young people, yet our own constitution already recognizes the youths as a special category that needs to be, to be taken good care of. But now back to your point, what do the Gen Zs want? Whatever the Gen Zs are saying is a reflection of what the Kenyan people want. One of the issues that the people are saying, or the Gen Z are saying, the sovereign power lies with the people. We are the people. Your policies must resonate with us. We are the people who put you into those positions. So whatever policy you put in place, that particular policy must resonate with the social, economic, and political aspirations and desires of the people of Kenya. If you do not put those things into context, what you're basically telling us, the power that we have donated to you, those powers, you're the one who are giving us. While our constitution is very clear that the sovereign power belongs to the people and that these people are exercising that mandate on behalf of the people. Trevor, if you look at an aspect of governance, you know, the concept of governance, you would say there's a, there are two things. There is power and there is authority. Power is your ability to influence the behavior of other people. Authority is your ability to exercise that power. That means you cannot exercise the power if you don't have the authority. What does that mean? You get your power to exercise the authority from the people of Kenya. And that means whereas the people of Kenya have an obligation to abide by the rules that have been set out in the law, you as a government, and you as a security agency, you have an obligation to obey and to listen to the views and aspirations of those people. Some of the issues that the Gen Zs are raising, how do you put 15% withholding tax on the social media that we people are using? How do you put 3% compulsory, you know, with deduction on our salary, yet the economy is not doing well. The Gen Zs are telling you, how do you remove taxation on helicopter and aircraft, and yet you put taxation 16% on bread, on financial services, and those other things. They're telling you basically, whereas during your campaign, you had an obligation and you committed to to reducing the standards of living, you know, improving the standards of living of people of Kenya, those policies now do not resonate with what you're telling us. And so we want you to be accountable, we want you to be transparent, and we want you to tell us how those monies are being spent. Basically, that is what 
the Gen Zs are saying. Okay. Yeah. Wendy? Uh, Trevor, citizen, thank you so much for this opportunity to come and sit here on this panel to talk about very sensitive matters at this point. I join the rest of the panelists to pass my sincere condolences to the families that have lost our heroes, we say, in the battle. Now, what we want, Trevor, is accountability. Two years ago, you came to us and told us, this is the change we want to bring. I see you, I hear you, and told us so many things. And we gave you the power as the people, as the sovereign, and said, OK, go to office and implement what you're saying. And you sold us hope. And the government said, we will come, we will work. But this has not happened. And people said that it will come to a place where we would rather die on the streets because even when we go back home, we are still dying. We are dying because we are sick. We cannot afford good health um, services. We are dying because we are hungry. We don't have food. We are dying because we are in poverty. And so what the Gen Z is saying, we want accountability of your role in that office. We want credibility of what you keep telling us. And what you are saying is you cannot keep imposing all of this on us. And we keep silent because you, we, you have taken from what you've had and we've gotten to a place where we have nothing more to give you. We have nothing more to offer. It cannot be bulging at the top, and yet at the bottom, we are dying. And to whom much is given, much is expected. This is, is a generation which we call woke. And right now, we've seen even on mainstream media and social media, social media has worked very nicely to putting out the atrocities that are happening on the streets, Trevor. If you look at the unison in voice that has been there, people have said we have no um, political divides, we have no uh, social economic divides, we are coming out as one voice saying this is enough and it's not working for us. Okay. Yes. Wanja? Uh, thank you very much, yeah. Trevor. Uh, w the work that I do is mostly in the informal settlements, in low income areas, working with marginalized youth. Therefore, today I had said, when I come here, I will not say, good morning, Trevor. I'll say, go there. Yeah. Because when we go to the streets, when we listen to the pop culture music, the youth are greeting each other to say, go there. And then if you are greeted like that, you say, go there, tena. That is what I heard when I was in the streets on Tuesday. You, the youth were dancing with each other, making friends with youth strangers. Only thing they were doing is dancing to music. The latest song I, I learn is called Kudade. The what, 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 go the tena. What am I saying? When we were in the streets of Nairobi on Tuesday, yesterday, myself being included, I did not see any semblance of danger, of youth planning to harm each other, of youth planning the worst of the worst. The only small running was when there was a tear gas that was thrown at them. So to answer you, what do the youth want? Number one, they don't want to be brutalized by the police. Our police in Kenya, are using old traditional methods of policing, but they are dealing with a new age of protesters. These are protesters, as Kemani Ishuga would say, they had a smartphone. They were just recording their videos, posting on the internet, but the police were using all the excesses. The youth just want to be allowed to participate in their freedoms. They don't want to be abducted, no doubt. When I was coming here, I had your report about the young student from Kenya School of Law. You've had cases where we have had new age of writers and liberal thinkers who are youth, the bloggers, Akina Gabriel, they went on missing in Communicado and then they were found in funny, funny places. The youth want to be allowed to have freedom to think and to do what they want. Number three, Trevor, there's this word, and I've been hearing it the whole of this week, at Youth Bomb. You know, when you start saying Kenya has a youth bomb, you're assuming that, you know, the word bomb is not particularly a positive word. It's as if it's something that is about to erupt. No, we have a youth bulge in Kenya. However, that youth bulge is not necessarily a bad thing. It means a more agile workforce. It means more people who are able to do a lot of work. It means innovation and technology. And Trevor, these 
maandamano the peaceful protest that we had because i believe it was p peaceful save for it being hijacked by the excess of the police and the goons the youth was how they mobilized each other using the social media tells you they could mobilize each other to do positive things for the country the youth want to be respected najua there in the mtaani we usually say uskatubebe ndogo that is the shang they use Ustubebe Dogo means, don't think we don't know what we, we are saying. When the young people were saying that we want to go to the streets, we have our rights, we have seven days of rage. Uh, and then separately, I had our deputy president, Takisema, at the young people, uh, we didn't even have a proper brief of what was going to happen with the youth. But it was all over social media that the youth were going to go to the streets. So it is as if we are dismissing them, you think they don't know what they are doing. When you mock them and make fun of them, at you, had a, you, you came with an Uber, going to KFC, taking your selfie with an iPhone, basically you are saying that they are clueless, they are just privileged and they don't even know what is affecting them. In fact, I remember the leader of the majority saying they don't know even the cost of electricity. But you are forgetting that there are Gen Z's who are family people. I know a lot of Gen Z's who are 2021, I can even take you to where they are but they have children. These are parents, these are people who are being dependent. You see, this thing of Gen Z is being portrayed as a clueless person who has no responsibility whatsoever. Go to villages. A 23-year-old has a wife, a husband, or a husband and two children, you know, and they work, and they run a family, really. The Gen Z is affected by the cost of living. You know, look at a Gen Z who lives in a place like Ibera or Huruma, for example. When the cost of PAD is 65, alafu ya wasichana, alafu imeenda 80, 85, that would look very minimal for a person who is detached with the reality of the poor people. However, it's a lot of money. Lastly, the youth want equal opportunities, one. Unajua, there's nothing as bad as feeling like even if you try, nothing will give. Because in any case, you've been profiled and being told us, you are from which community, you are like this, you are from there, Hauna connection. This is a government of shareholders and private shareholders. So you are like, ah, if I'm not a shareholder, I won't get something. Lastly, jobs. Money in the pocket. Money gives the youth freedom. It gives them power of choice. And Trevor, allow me to just finish, because I know you want me to finish, by talking about Article 55 of the Constitution. It is a standalone article on the issues of the youth. And it says that there will be programs to ensure that youth are protected from harmful cultural practices and exploitation. For a very long time, the youth of Kenya have been exploited by the political class. They have been exploited through harmful cultural practices. For example, being dismissed, ageism. You, you are too young. You know us, when we are old, when we are sitting down a tree, we can see far than you young people on top of a tree. Basically, you are, those proverbs and those culturals, you are saying youth are not, they are not wise, they don't have wisdom, they don't know what's good for them. They should first sit down at the corner to wait to be given opportunities. But we are saying, no, we are many. And when we were in the streets, I used to hear the young people were saying, we are many, tukowengi, tukowengi. And then they were also saying, we are peaceful, we are peaceful. So a government that is dismissing the majority truly is really a bad government. And then also, the, that same article talks about equal opportunities to access employment and also politically to be involved. The young people went to greet the MPs in parliament. Because they were saying, si tumena kusalimia mwishimu wetu. You know, the moment the young people were saying, as we have gone to greet our MP in the parliament, probably the MP rarely goes to where they are to listen to them. And that's why the, the MP was passing a resounding yes to the finance bill. But now, if the law is saying that youth have access to political rights, it means right to be elected, but also to elect people. And if they elect, the leaders to represent them. So it has been a cocktail of issues. My view is that the finance bill was just a a tipping point for layers upon layers of issues that are affecting the youth. But the bottom line is that last week, this week has been a turning point. And anybody who will ever dismiss the young people anymore will be living out of touch with the realities in okay. Kenya. Everything that you just said, the president wants a conversation with the young people. And that's where we're heading to right after this commercial break. I didn't want you to stop by there. I just wanted you to take a, I wanted to take a commercial break. <laughs> so once we come back, there's something the president said will play that. Then now we pontificate upon it and see what's raised and how do you track progress. That's the conversation we're having right after this. At Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Citizen Daybreak. We're taking a quick break. Commercial break, we're back in just a bit.